My portfolio was 5 years old. It was definitely time for a change. This might be my favorite project to revisit because it really shows how my coding evolved between then and now. We won't cover everything about this site, some parts would get a little bit too boring, but today I want to show you why and how I built the fully procedural Bellatro style code animation that runs on the homepage. <music> The idea. At the time of creating the repo, June of 2025, I was watching a lot of Bellatro. I'm absolutely not a gamer, but I love watching Let's Plays. Bellatro's aesthetic, especially its smooth animations and shader work, made it easy to see why the game is so addictive, even for someone like me who does not play at all. So that became the direction for my homepage. A Bellatro style card deck that shows my projects, lets you click on one, and smoothly transitions into a new scene filled with more cards that would show more of that particular project. The card mesh. The first step was figuring out how to represent the cards. The obvious solution would have been to model one in Blender and import the geometry into 3.js. But I wanted everything to be procedural. No external assets, no static models, just pure code. Each card is generated directly with a custom geometry builder. It starts from a rounded rectangle, built mathematically by sampling points around each corner arc and connecting them into faces. And a side strip connects both, giving the card a solid 3D body. This gives me full control over proportions, corner radius and segment resolution. Change the depth or aspect ratio, every card updates instantly. It definitely is overkill since I only need one variation for the whole scene, but but coming up with your own 3D geometry algorithm is always a fun side quest. Each card uses three custom shader materials, one for the front, one for the back, and one for the edges. This separation gives flexibility. The front can show a project preview, the back can display a different pattern, and the edges have their own reflection logic. It's a small amount of code, but it forms the foundation for everything else. All cards share the same procedural definition, consistent, lightweight, and scalable the card material. For materials, I didn't want to rely on pre-built 3JS shaders, so I wrote my own vertex and fragment shaders to control how each surface reacts to light and camera movement. Well, when I say light, it, it's, it's not really a thing here, but we'll come back to that later. As mentioned a few sentences above, each card has three shaders. Let's focus on the front for now. The front face uses a texture sampler for the project image, plus a few key uniforms, things like the card's aspect ratio and the texture's aspect ratio. That ensures the card always displays in a proper cover mode, even when dimensions change. On top of that, there is a bolatro inspired reflective streak that slides across the surface when the card rotates. It's subtle, but gives the UI that glossy, game-like quality. The fun part, the streak isn't a static highlight texture. It's computed entirely in the shader. It uses the card's surface normal and the camera's view direction. The shader reflects the view vector across the normal, then derives a gradient from it. Two diagonal sweeps are generated, slightly offset from each other, and softened with smooth step functions so they are never too harsh. Finally, I scale the streak intensity and blend it over the texture. All of this happens on the GPU, no texture, no Photoshop trick, just math and a little bit of shader gymnastics. Animations. One of the most recognizable parts of Bellatro's UI is how the cards move. They feel responsive, elastic, even, even a little bit alive. I wanted that same energy. There are four main animation states. Deck Enter, Deck Leave, Project Enter, and Project Leave. Each defines how cards move in or out depending on the navigation. These two project card animation just is a mover along the y-axis, sliding up or down with smooth interpolation. With JSAP, that's pretty straightforward. The initial card dex animation though, on the other end, follow more complex motion paths. Instead of importing animation curves from Blender directly, I generated them at runtime using Catmull ROM splines, a mathematical curve that smoothly connects points, creating natural motion that I also covered in this video. That means all card motion is calculated in real time. Positions, rotations, and timing all come from math, giving the animation a natural flow while staying fully procedural. I also use hash maps to track animation states between cards, so the transitions stay in sync as you navigate. It's definitely on the more over-engineered side, but it does make everything feel seamless and alive. 
bonus shader madness. The back of each card originally felt a little bit empty, so I added something extra. A procedural roof tile pattern, inspired from the French church rooftops from Franche-Comté, the region where I'm originally from in France. I did not paint a bump map or texture in Figma, I wrote the entire thing in GLSL. At first I wasn't too sure my brain could pull this off, but after breaking down the pattern on paper and experimenting in shader toy, I got surprisingly close to what I had imagined. It's built from distance fields and grid sampling, layered with steps masks to form a normal map that fakes depth and highlights. That pattern is then mixed with the same reflection logic from the front material, so it reacts dynamically as the card moves. The result is a subtle but distinct texture that gives the back of each card some personality, and admittedly, took way too long to perfect. Interaction System the entire project is built with SvelteKit and TypeScript, and 3.js4 rendering. The structure is based on a custom scene manager, a small framework I wrote to manage transitions between views. Each scene, home project, about, and more, is extended from this abstract class, with entry and exit animation hooks. When you navigate, the router talks to the scene manager, which handles WebGL transitions smoothly without breaking front-end reactivity. No spaghetti even chains, no overlapping updates, just clean communication between DOM and WebGL Canvas. It also uses a texture pool manager class for reusability and route parameters like the project slug to decide what to load. Sure, I could have used global stores and subscribed events directly there, but I wanted to see how far I could push a clean modular architecture. It's definitely more structured than a portfolio needs, but it makes it maintainable and scalable long term. Little nerdy treats. Beyond the core logic, I added a few small touches to make the scene feel alive. The camera parallax follows the mouse, adding subtle depth. A custom ray casting manager handles hover detection and tilts the cards slightly towards the cursor. I also added a little bit of pearl and noise to positions and rotations, so even when nothing's happening, the scene breathes a little. All these effects come together to make the UI feel tactile, reactive, and still lightweight. There is still a lot we didn't cover, like how the hover system bubbles up to Svelte, the texture manager, internalization, intern, wow, um, i18n setup, or the static image exporter script. But that's content for another video. If you enjoyed this breakdown, consider subscribing, and maybe, just maybe, YouTube will actually show you the next one.